okay so let's try this let's see if this is running so we will create for now like a main so let's just start we're going to define here k by let's get it from the command line okay So let's assume we're gonna call k means, and then we will give uh, the the value of k as an input. Let's import this here. Um, and let's use a file name for now of one database I have I'm gonna share this with you guys uh, I have some data generated with Gaussian mixtures this is like a toy database to try this algorithm um, so our data is gonna be read span that's that read CSV because we need the path to the data so let's So we're gonna get the current path where we are working with this function. So it's like get the current working directory, right? We're gonna import this library OS and uh, let's use path to data another variable that's going to be joining the current path With uh, in my case, I have this database in one folder called data one. This, you can change this accordingly. So now I'm gonna read the data from this path plus the file name. So this is gonna be OS path to data and file name. We will use header equals zero telling that the first row is telling the name of the columns and then we run this so we will create an instance of the class with this data and k we should later call the run function let's see just if this is running later we're gonna add more things like saving images how we generate the output and all that Oh, this needs the path, right? Because we're going to we're going to save there all the outputs. So let's open our terminal here. Let's go. Okay, now it's working. So let's keep adding more uh, functions here. Let's now create images of the running. In this case, we would like to have like one image per iteration, right? So let's call this function generate image. And this will receive the centroids we need the matrix g the membership matrix and let's initialize this as known when it doesn't come we're going to do that for the initial picture of just the raw data we know without any clustering result and the uh, images only going to be two dimensions so the user should provide the two variables that he or she wants to see so let's assume that initially are not none if they don't provide them in case they don't provide those variables we are gonna just extract the first two columns from the database okay so if we will just get cell dot data dot columns of zero which means that the first variable and same for v2 so if Okay, so 
after we clear up the thing with the variables, the first thing is to set the memberships and that is going to happen only when the matrix G is not known. We can get the memberships, right? And okay, so the memberships is basically a vector with a number telling what is the centroid assigned to every single data point. So basically we need to go over all the rows and uh, see where is the one located and then adding that number to the membership vectors. Why we need this? Because here we are creating an image. So we basically need to decide what is the color that is going to be used to plot every data point. So we can use numpy dot where to see where the matrix G is equal to one for the data entry i. So that num data points. Okay, so here we are going over all the data points and checking where there is a one located. And usually this returns a vector of arrays. The first zero is to be inside the vector and uh, the second zero is necessary because then inside the vector there is an array with a number, with the actual number, and here we just want the number. So you, you can actually run later this without these zeros and you will see that it's basically done to extract the inner number that is the best entry for data point i. So now we need to ser set colors. Let's assume we're gonna have an array of colors. We will build this right now. So the thing here is like we will have a mapping that is going to tell us the color depending on the cluster where the data point belongs to, right? We'll build that later. And if there's no any memberships, in other words, that matrix J is none, then we will just use the same color for everyone. It's going to be, let's say, yellow. So after that, we need to start creating the scatter plot. We will plot the first variable. We will use all the rows, right? And uh, here is V1, for the first variable, V2, and the color is going to be colors. Let's use a color map. You can use anyone here. Let's import here. Okay, so so every time we are creating the plot with the result, the first thing is to draw all the data points, right? And after that, we need to iterate over the centroids and plot the centroids with a different color. So this is kind of similar to this, but centroids instead. And it's the centroids J. V1 and centroids J, V2, and we need to index this, right? So it's a block. Red for the centroids. And let's use also a different marker. Let's use a zero tool and let's customize the size of it. Let's use size 80. Okay, so there we have the center zone. We have the data points, the centroids, and now we need to show this. So we wanna add here this uh, block equals false because we don't want the system or the program to wait for our click to continue to the next iteration. We want this to continue running. So that's why we add this argument there. And uh, we're going to save the figures because at the end we will go to a folder where all the figures are saved in order. So for that we need, let's say, a path. We'll call it out path. Let's do the following. So 
this is going to be the path where we're going to save all the output data and we're going to use better a function to generate this path. That is going to receive us an input, the path to the data at least, right? To generate the output starting from that position. So let's also use k to make a difference on the name of the folder. Sometimes that helps. So here the out path is going to be together with the name of the picture. Let's call it picture with a number dot png. Is it going to be Let's use a counter for this. That is going to be incremented every time we save a new image. Let's also make sure that we clear up the figure because if not, we will be painting again and again the centroids. We want to delete the previous ones every time we update the image. Uh, so here, these two things should be part of a new path right so we need to again os.path.join okay so again we are saving here image it's going to be picture underscore one picture underscore two and so on and this is going to be inside the out path let's initialize this variable here to zero and now we need to create the function that generates the out path Let's do it here. Every time we run the code, we want to create a new folder with a timestamp so we don't step on previous folders with previous uh, set of images, right? So let's create a timestamp using the library date time. So with this, So let's build a string with the name we would like to use for the folders. So for that, we're going to extract the month, the day, and the year, and the hour and minutes, actually, out of this timestamp. So the month is going to be ts.month. Uh, we want this to be a string, right? Um, plus, let's use a dot here. So we're going to copy this here. Let's use the day again, the year. I'm sorry, here better the year, month, day. Now the hour. Finally, the minutes. So this whole string will be part of the name. So our out path is going to be that path that join the path to the data that we will receive here with this timestamp, and let's add a string telling what was k. Okay, so we are creating this new path. Now we need to make sure that this directory exists. So we need to create it. We do it with that function. And we need to set that exist, okay, equals true. Meaning that if the folder already exists, we should just keep it and let's return this. Okay, so what else is missing? We need to actually create the colors, right? So we're going to make a function called create colors, depending on the number of centroids. So we will return here 
the array with all the colors or the colors for all the data points. So here we need to iterate over the centroids because we will have as many colors as groups or centroids. Okay. Here we need to create a random color. So let's generate random hexadecimal numbers between the white and black, basically. So white is uh, six zeros and black is only Fs. So what we can do is we can use the rand integer function from the random library. And we're gonna create a number between zero and the black color. But we're gonna format this as a hexadecimal number with six digits, right? So it's gonna be that is the way to format. So let me finish this here. So we create the number and then we format as a hexadecimal number and uh, we add at the beginning the symbol and we format this as an F string. So here what we are doing is building, let me import. I'm using randint from the random library instead of numpy because the numpy randint function does not include the right limit of the interval as an alternative. And here we want to include all the possibilities between white and black. Okay, so basically I'm trying to build here a hexadecimal code, but the ones used for colors. In this website, you can see a table with the colors or with the range. So you know that hexadecimal colors are built this way. So this is why we start here, we end up here. Going back to our code, this is a string that will correspond to a random color between white and black. So now this color we will be appending to the previous colors. And that's it.